हेलो सर सर यस पवन गो हेड सर एक्चुअली दिस इज माय फर्स्ट लेक्चर ओके कैन यू शो मी व्हाट टॉपिक्स आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड एल्गोरिथम्स अच्छा बिकॉज़ आई कांट फाउंड दैट सिलेबस इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सेक्शन सो दैट्स व्हाई कैन यू शो मी दैट स्लाइड वंस अगेन ओके श्योर थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू Got it. Uh, just give me a minute. I'll do that. Sure, sir. Okay. How many of you are having the first session today? How many of you are having the first session? Vapor. Uh, Anand, myself, today first session. <laughs> okay, three, four. Hi, this is Ramesh. Uh, today is my first session. Yeah. Hi, Ramesh. Okay, uh, I got your point, guys. I'll 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 just invest two minutes in order to dive you what we are gonna cover in this course, and then we will continue with for the today's topic, which is nothing but pattern printing. Okay. Uh, guys, are you able to view the syllabus? I'll share the stock. You can go through in detail. Okay, I'll upload it in the Ashoka ID Facebook page. I think you all are aware about it. Yes, no. Yes, sir. Cool. So I'll upload it over there. And in very broad perspective, I can say that we're gonna discuss pattern printing, fundamentals of array, fundamentals of matrix. So basically, what are all the topics which are listed over here? Just give me a minute. Okay. All the topics which are listed over here, from pattern printing to fundamentals of a maths, these topics will come under logical programming. So once you're good in the logical programming, we will try to build concepts for. Problem solving skills, which turns out to be data types, number system, bit manipulation, and introduction to various coding platform and the recursion. So this will found a formation for the problem solving skills. Then we will learn bit manipulation, stack, and little dynamic programming and heap. Okay, so broadly I can say that problem solving skills. logical programming and various tsa data structures and algorithms are included i hope in the broader perspective you got an idea so the selection of the problem statements are something like that we are picking up the problem statement which are asked in the companies and we are also picking up the problem statement which will Help you to build the fundamentals so that you can solve the problem statement which are asked in these companies. Okay, is it clear? In very broader perspective, guys, yes, no. Yes, sir. Actually, we are going to discuss only about the companies' problems, sir. We are going to discuss all about theoretical part as well as examples also. Of course, see, uh, you cannot jump into the, for example, if someone wants to teach you English. 
he can't simply teach you tenses right yes sir yes and he can't teach you voices active voice and passive voice so first of all he has to teach you what is sentence and slowly move forward yes, makes sense so we will follow the same approach sure, cool guys so uh, let me share the screen and let's try to build the fundamental with respect to the pattern printing uh, are you able to view the whiteboard microsoft whiteboard is it visible yes sir yes we are able okay so from mm -hmm. from when hl started sir going to start sir uh see it's not about the demos are going so i'll do the time pass what are the problems you can be at discussing today it will also build you to in your logical programming right yes, so course has been started so tomorrow like yesterday i try to clarify all the doubts which you are having with respect to the session and today we going to start our actual syllabus okay yes sir cool let's start with a very simple topic which is nothing but pattern printing had you come across this topic any time pattern printing anyone no okay so yes sir you... yeah okay. during the college sir. during the college during the colleges okay okay yeah. during college during schools and okay. forgetting job also Ah, okay. So we'll start with a very simple pattern, and slowly, slowly we will complicate the stuff so that your logical fundamentals are being built up. Right. Cool. I'll say that in lots of competitive exams, you will find the problem statement with respect to the pattern. Okay. Now let's try to understand how to solve the problem statement with respect to the pattern. when you're trying to do that the only input which is given into your program is nothing but n n is nothing but number of lines you have to print in your program for example if n is equal to 3 you have to print something like this when n is equal to 4 you have to print something like this okay so instead of directly jumping into the code let's try to understand how to analyze the pattern so that once you are able to do it for the simple pattern we can generalize it for complex pattern as well okay so the first point is you have to find the relationship between number of rows number of columns and the value of n are you clear with the first point what you have to do how to do that we can discuss like when you are solving multiple problem statement we will follow the same step are you clear with the first step what we have to do is it clear yeah yes right so if i will give you this example can you tell me number of rows four four number of rows of four over here what are the number of rows over here what are 3. the number of rows 3 3 three, right so can i say that n is equal to what number it's of rows all ah, right so can i say that or it's better to write in the reverse manner number of rows are equal to the value of n if n is 3 there are three rows of n is 4 there are four rows make sense yes okay see we have established the first relationship now let's let's try to understand this pattern let's say that the structure is something like this the structure is something like this i'm expecting response from few more people so please try to respond okay uh, let's say okay okay let me draw something like this hmm it looks like complicated pattern but at then we're going to see how to print it but as of now can you tell me number of rows over here five 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 rows value of n is still 
What about the number of rows over here? Seven. 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 Now, what you have to do? You have to find the relationship between them. With R and the value of n. Can you tell me, is there any relationship between them? Two and minus. The number of rows is equal to uh, n. Mm -hmm. Two into n minus n. one. Two into n minus one. Minus one. Makes sense to everyone. So, n is three. Let's try to put it in this formula. Two into three, six. Six minus one, five. Right. Same goes over here. Sorry, two into three. So here, two into four, which is eight. Eight minus one, seven. So you're getting the number of rows. Is it clear that you establish the relationship between number of rows and the value of n? Is it fine? Basic mathematics will be required for, I think, class six, seventh, and eighth. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. If it's clear, let's move forward and try to form the relationship between number of columns. Let's say if pattern is this. Again, okay, this is your third point. We're trying to establish the relationship between number of columns. It can have the relation either with the n or it can have the relationship either with the number of rows. We'll figure it out in examples. Okay, cool. So can you tell me if this is on pattern then n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 4. So if n is equal to 3, how many columns are there? Three. Now I'm talking about the column. There are three columns. Three columns. Three. Okay. And if n is equal to 4, how many columns are there? Four, four columns. columns. Four columns. Make sense? Three columns and the four columns. So number of columns are equal to what? Number of rows. Number of rows. Number of rows. Yeah. Number of rows or the value of n. Value of input. Value of n. Okay. Just, just try to understand. Is it equal to the number of rows or is it equal to the value of n? Value of input n. Value of n, right? Make sense? Everyone, are you clear with this? Sure. Yes. Okay. If I will give you this pattern, let's say star 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 we are playing just with asterisk as of now okay if this is the pattern now can you tell me what is the relationship over here it's equal to n plus one equal to i sorry rows uh, column is equal to rows column is equal to rows how can you say that column is equal to rows uh, so, because uh, uh, at the time of looping, we have to print per, in first row only one, col one column, in second row two columns, in third row three columns. Makes sense. So, let's try to understand. Uh, can I write column number one, two, and three? And here the column number one, two, three, and four? Yes. And let's write the row number 1, 2, 3. And let's write the row number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Is it clear? So if row number is 1, how many columns you are printing? 1. If row number is 1, we are printing 1 column, right? If row number is 2, how many columns you are printing? 2. If row number is 3, how many columns you are printing? 3. Can I say that same relationship over here? One row, first row, first column. Two rows, two columns. Three rows, three columns. Four rows? Four columns. Four, four columns. columns, right? So can I say that number of columns in each row is equal to the value of R? Yes. Is that clear? If you can establish these kinds of relationship, you are almost done with the pattern printing. Trust me. Always try to solve the problem statement by following some algorithm. So if you follow the steps, definitely you can get the answer. Okay. Now let's say that when you used to print the data, do you print in vertical level like alpha print? Okay. Let's say that this is in star I have to print. 
will you print in this fashion vertical fashion first these three then these two then these one or you no. print in this manner first row horizontal horizontal right i think you are clear with this point yes yes okay so before moving forward we establish so we print in an horizontal way okay now let's try to establish the next rule which is outer loop which you will write in the code the outer loop will be for number of it will be for rows and the inner loop which you will be writing in your logic columns. will be for columns okay how it is true how the execution will work we will see it but as of now are you clear with this yes sir yes sir clear to all right now let's look into the uh sixth identity which is nothing but if you're printing something if you're printing something sometimes you have to print the row number sometimes you have to print the column number sometimes you have to print the some special character like asterisk okay now we will write down the program and try to sum up all the concepts which we have done okay so i'll say that just look into the slide once till the time i'll create a workspace for you sir uh, i'm saying that view all the points if you have any doubts ask till the time i'll create a workspace for you in eclipse okay okay sure sure yeah. i think everyone is familiar with eclipse right anand sir uh, yes yeah, sure. yeah. i have doubt regarding the point number 2 you you applied the formula 2 into n minus 1 so okay. also in the second you know uh, pattern where you have written 7 so how would that how how do you get 4 here uh see this would be given as an input number of in the sample example they will clearly mention that okay this is an input n is your input if n is 3 you have to print something like this if n is 4 you have to print something like this so you okay. have to count the number of rows okay sorry okay n will be known to you okay because so, i have based on that you have to decide right yeah go ahead uh, in the same example where we established the rows for 2n minus 1 mm -hmm. okay uh, uh, can you help with the relation for column also or is saying uh This is a two n minus one relationship we established with, with rows, right? Hmm. So, can you help me with the relation for columns also? Of course, we will discuss that. But as of now, it's a complex pattern. So, if you want to know the details, what I'll say that break the patterns into two part. Hmm. This is the first part. This is the second part. Now, if you look into the first part, number of rows are equal to n. If n is four, there are four rows in the first part. Correct. Are you getting the point? In the second part, number of rows are equal to n minus one. Mm -hmm. If I will number the row number as one, two, three, four, and if I will number the row as three to one, it's up to me if I want to number them one to four or three to one. Number of rows are same, right? Yeah. Are okay. you getting this point, or is it getting complicated at this stage? A little. a little complicated so just as of now just understand it we are bifurcating into two patterns and we'll solve them separately okay okay so of course these kinds of stuff will come as of now we are just building the fundamentals okay sure okay cool just guys give me a minute uh, your workspace is being created as of now look into over there i'm just creating a new project okay something went wrong okay can you help me with the group id what should be the group id
guys what should be the group id see all these knowledge are not required we just creating in workspace so if you know it you can say <laughs> okay com dot ashok id artifact id dsf uh, project name yes yeah. yes okay Hmm. Let's try to have our class and change it to Java. Cool. New class. So then, first pattern we'll just simply name it as pattern one. Okay. Okay. The package name is discourage. we will fix it later as of now uh, i'm just simply zooming it out mm -hmm. it's not working so we have to change the font size right font yeah okay control shift plus we can do it control shift plus okay uh basically i prefer intellij a lot so yeah okay uh, are you able to view it yes 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 sir what was the shortcut control shift oh or control shift plus okay control shift plus okay okay so as you know in the java the execution starts with the main method we will follow that uh let's try to write down the logic as of now i'm fixing the value of n n is equal to 3 so as we discussed and i want to print this very simple pattern which we discussed it should look something like this is it clear to all i want to print something like this a very simple pattern Okay. Yes. Sir. Cool. Now, can you tell me how many rows are there? Three. Three rows. So my outer loop should go for. N times. Three times. Three times, right? In general, can I say n times? It makes more sense to go for the n time. Yes. Because later yes, on, if n value changes to four, my code should work. Yes. Okay. Now tell me for each row how many columns you have to print. Three. 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 N. And right. So, so three is nothing but n. Can I say that for the first row also have to print three columns? For the second row also three columns? For the third row also have to print three columns? So my inner loop should go for for n j equal to one. One. J less than n. or equal to n. 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 J plus plus. Plus plus. Okay, and here comes your sys out. And guys, to be very honest, I won't be writing an exact code for all the problem statements. See, if I will do that, it will become a spoon feeding. So as soon as you are getting familiar with the topic, we will start with the solving in the Eclipse. For few of the harder problem statement, we will code in Eclipse. For the later of the problem statement, we will write the pseudo code. Try to understand. Ah, uh, see, there is two things over here. i'm just trying to brief it down i don't know what approach you follow but this is an ideal approach you should follow in order to solve the problem statement even during the interviews so uh how many of you after understanding the problem statement directly implement it how many of you do that anything like it's not about the dsa if you understand it do you directly go for the implementation actually everyone understand the problem statement but uh, actually we don't know how the logic we have to implement for that particular problem got it so then i think it's too early to discuss that once you're in a position to come up with a logic you will do this mistake and we will discuss later in this course okay it's a mistake every newbie do cool so can you tell me how how many times this inner loop is going to work 
for i equal to one, three. it is going to work three times. That means three star is printed. Make sense? Does it make sense to everyone? For yes. i equal yeah. to one, yeah. right? It's a very simple program. So after three stars are printed, what I have to do? Do I have to print that all the stars in the same line, or I should move to the next line? Next to the next line. Next line. When I should move to the next line? When three star print first. First, first it is. See, if then outer loop breaks, then it will go to the next line. Outer loop breaks, or once the inner loop Executes is complete. Yeah. Inner loop, inner loop, sir. Inner loop. Sorry, computer. inner loop. Yeah. Yes, inner, inner loop, loop computation is done. Yes, and I should go to the next line. Makes sense. So system dot order print align will work. Yeah. Okay. Let's run this program. Okay. So I think it's a very simple program. We shouldn't. Make any mistake, uh, and it's true. We are able to get the answer right. Will it work for n equal to four? Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. If it works, then our logic is correct. Now, I think you all know the fundamental. We cannot write the program in this manner, right? I cannot every time go and change the value of n equal to four. Instead of I should get the input from the user. So yes, if I want yes. to get the input on the user, Inner what class. should I use? Scanner. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, later in the course, we won't be using scanner. What is the option, sir? Then. Maybe buffer. What? Buffer reader. Buffer reader. Okay. Why so buffer reader? Uh, I'll teach you how to use the buffer reader if you don't know. Mm -hmm. But I won't. I don't know. Okay, so it won't take hardly fifteen minutes. Okay. A scanner is slow. Okay, so in DSA we take care of speed a lot. Okay, now I think if you would have learned C somewhere before taking the input, they generally we used to put the message system dot out dot printer and enter the value of n. Do we do this? Enter yeah. the number of rows. Yes. yes. Don't do this. For example, who is writing the code? You. Yeah, you know how to execute. You know what are the yes. input format? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Will you do it by your own, or will you follow the input pattern which is mentioned in the program? Will you do it by your own, or will you follow the pattern which is mentioned in the program? Guys, mentioned in the program. Mentioned mention in the, the program. program, right? Makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Mention the program. So basically, where you will submit your code? Where you will submit your code once it is written? Either in the hacker rank, any platform. Yes. Yes. Any coding platform like lead code, anything. So basically, in hacker rank and lead code, someone is creating this program. Someone is creating, right? As yeah, yeah. I have also created lots of program for you, so that it's helpful in your course. So the point is, someone is creating the program. You know the input format. Now, your program would be executed by server, right? Does server need to know you have to enter the value of n, or will server will take care of that? It will take care. It will take will care. Will take care. Right. So if server is going to take care of that for him, this message is unnecessary. Yes. 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 And let's say I have kept this message. So what it will do, it will try to execute your program by putting the value of n. Let's say it has passed the value of n as four. Output is something like this. Now what the server will do, it won't say this. This is your output. It will say that user has put, user has printed, enter the value of n. And these things over the console, except four, because four is a different entity. So you can see that everything which is in the black color is printed in the console, right? It was expecting something of this sort. It was expecting something of this sort. Let me run it again. Uh, it was expecting something of this sort, but it got one line extra. So won't it say that your logic is wrong? will simply get the message your output does not match 
make sense this is your expected output but you are printing one line extra which is nothing but enter the value of n are you getting this point or not your test cases will fail yes 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 sir. Yes. yes right so i i don't want to emphasize much on it but many newbie make this mistake and they complain why my program is failing because server doesn't have that intelligence that it will distinguish between your output and like these statements and the output which is star right so it will consider everything as an output okay so we're done with the simple pattern let's try to bit complicate the stuff and we will stick to the fundamentals so let's go back to the um uh, our whiteboard and guys i'll request that please try to join as soon as possible because i've seen that joinings are going on till 9:40 and understand that we have only 45 minutes to learn something new right okay so let's let's try to print this pattern if n is equal to 4 i want you to write the logic for this and if n is equal to 3 this you have to print when n is equal to 4 and this you have to print when n is equal to 3 so what i'm saying is leave what you have to print so far as of now can we try to establish the relationship between number of rows and the value of n will it change or will it remain same as the previous program same same same, same. same. number of rows are same right mm -hmm. yeah what about the number of columns will it change or will it remain same In this same. program, also same. Yeah, I'm getting some kind of air noise while you're speaking to you. Uh, Might be headset issue. Uh, Sabu didn't get you. I could see some kind of air noise while you're speaking. Okay, yeah, no worries. Might be headset having some kind of issue. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number of columns. Number of columns are equal to what? N. In this current example, number of columns are equal to what? Number two. N. Just, just look at it. Is it in similar to the previous program? The number of columns are equal to n. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. So, so if I will, if I will look into this, uh, guys, I'm getting a lots of voice from your end. Please. So I have muted everyone. You can unmute. And whenever you are speaking something, so that it's not creating a disturbance for others. Okay. You can print the number of I over there. Number of I over there. No, no, no. So we can print as star in place of oh, sorry one. Okay. Print the I sir instead of star. Okay. Okay. We'll see that. Let's try to uh, basically. I'll create a new class. And it's pattern two. Basically, one is replaced with two. That's it. Now, if you notice that, can I say that structure is same apart from this print statement? The structure is same, right? Mm -hmm. It makes more sense. The structure is same. Yeah. Now you have to identify what to print. So for that, let's try to trace it down. I'll take an annotation. You have to print something this, something of this sort, right? Now, let's see when. I is equal to one. J will go from where to where? One to three. One to three. One to three. Okay. So basically, it will execute for three times. When yeah. I is two, J will go from where to where? One to three. One to three. And when I is three, J will go from? One to three. Okay. One to three. Right. So can I say that when when this phenomena is happening? J is every time changing. J is sometimes one, then it's two, then it's three. It's one, then it's two, then it's three. Then it's one, then it's two, then it's three. Yes. Right. But if I will talk about when the i is equal to one, I have to print all ones. Mm, constant it is. When i is equal to two, I have to print all twos. 
and when i is equal to 3 i have to print all threes because we know that the outer loop is for the number of rows so i will go from 1 to 3 and if you notice that whatever the row number is over here we are printing that right right so instead of star we will be printing the value of i someone has given the correct in, uh, correct answer and it makes sense okay so we'll simply print i and our code will work as it is so if you'll follow the fundamental i think it's easier to move ahead right slowly slowly we'll complicate the stuff not to worry uh, let's print three so you're getting in correct output makes sense okay now i just want to mention one last thing we won't be testing our code in eclipse all these programs are created in the hacker rank once we are done with all these demo sessions i'll guide you how to use hacker rank and how to solve the problem statement in our contest okay so that you are not coming to me asking anand is my code correct or not you are coming to me only if your code is wrong because if it is saying that it's accepted that means you have written the correct logic if you are getting wrong answer some exception then we can sit together to solve the problem right so it will save your time because you are instantly getting the feedback whether your code is correct or not second it's also reducing burden on me i don't have to view all the codes i will also i will only view the code which is giving wrong answer or some exception right okay is it clear till now yes sir okay so yes, it's sir. in doubt clearing time from 9 15 to 9 30 if you have any doubts you can stay and those who are having the scrum call at 9 30 you can please drop it off Thank you, everyone. You can join on the same link. Okay, we'll continue our learning tomorrow. So, what's your doubt, guys? Sir, see. Actually, we are going to discuss. You have shown shown me in the starting of that PPT. Some companies will be there, so like a fan companies. Right. We are going to discuss only those problems, or we are going to discuss all the hacker run problems also. See, uh, hacker rank problems are of the vast majority. You cannot finish it off. Like there are hundreds and thousands. So if you, so what are the problems? Written? Are you able to be the Microsoft board? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So what are the problems written? I mentioned over here. Each are the linked in particular problem statements. Okay. Guys are starting annotating. Let's stop annotation. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, right. So what I'm saying is these problem statements would be linked to any one of the problem statement. It can be from the hacker rank. It can be from lead code. It can be from our own context which is hosted in the hacker rank. Make sense? Yes, so yes, it's not sir. the problem statement from the company. Uh, sir? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like uh, we are mentioning about the um, some hackathon, right? It's in contest. Contest, yeah. Okay. So it will be like some weekly or monthly. Can you tell us some more about that? So contest will goes for a lifetime. You don't have to stop practicing in that. It will also act as a library. For example, you got in similar kind of problem statement and you are in the like you're to, you're trying to solve the problem statements, but uh, you remember that somewhat similar problem statement I have solved it. So mm -hmm. what you can do, you can simply go to the hacker rank. You can simply write down the name of the problem statement and you can see your submission. So it will help you an idea. Oh, I have solved the problem statement in this manner. So it will give me a hint how to approach next. Okay. So it should be available. It won't be in weekly contest or what. It will be available for, for the lifetime. And if you all guys are interested and if you want to participate in the environment where companies are hiring, and at least 20 people are agreeing with me that I will participate in that contest. If you'll come up with me, I'll create a separate contest for you. Okay. Yes, sir. So that you will learn how to practice when time is clicking. 
what to leave in that particular problem statement, which problem statement I should solve, how much time I should invest in a problem statement. You will learn all that stuff. See, these things become interesting when there is a lots of competition, right? Yes, sir. Actually, nowadays, all companies are asking on the basis of DSA only. Correct. Correct, man. I have seen that. Uh, any other query? Sir, we will get the recordings on Google Drive. Everything. Okay. See for the recordings and everything. I think uh, admins and Ashok would be the right person to discuss. Yes, yeah, sure, sir. I will talk to you. Okay. okay. So I'm mostly customer centric, basically student centric person. I'll take care of all your queries. I'll make sure that you are not facing any issue in terms of content. Yes, yeah, sure, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. So after this course, uh, sir, are we able to crack the uh, exams in Google, Amazon, like Big Amazing? Uh, see, for the product-based companies, I can guarantee. But if you talk about particularly Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, or any Fang or any big companies like Uber, I'll say that it will require an extra practice. We have discussed all that stuff in our first Q and A, so you can go through the recordings. But for sure, I'll say that if there is an any problem statement which you're not able to solve, and you try to Google that, and the solution which you're getting from the Google, you would be in a position to understand that. So if you will constantly try to improve yourself, for sure, you can crack it up. But for that, you need a hard work. I can't come up and write the code for you. But I'm, I can make sure that all the fundamentals are good to go. For example, once you learn Java 8, if new version comes up, you are in a position to learn it by yourself, right? If you're good in Java 8. Mm. Like, Okay. Yes, sir. All concepts are going to cover in only Java now, because as I am the backend Java developer. Man, it's fine. See, DSS, first of all, language independent. And not to worry, uh, I'm good on Java, Python, JavaScript, whatever you prefer, just write on the code. I'll look into it and I'll resolve your query. Okay. Even if it's in C, it works for me. Yes, I can dip the code. But yeah, we will prefer Java because most of the students are from the Java background. So whenever we are writing the code, it will be in the Java. Yes, sir. that's what I am asking. Yes, sir. that's good. That's good. Yeah, right. But it doesn't have any language constraint. Yeah. Uh, any other query, guys? Uh, hello, sir. Are you going to provide any running notes or any uh, by, uh, like already created notes just mm -hmm. for reference purpose while uh, going this course? Sure, sure, Nishant. It's always advisable to create your own notes. Do that. For the important topics, I'll try to share the docs which I have with me. Okay. For the pattern printing I have, for the fundamentals I have, for the important problem statements of DP graph and trees, I have the docs. Okay. okay. Yes. And please try to share this to the admin team. So this all the concepts which we are going to discuss all over through the six months. <clears throat> Sure, I'll share with the admin team so that they can upload on the Facebook page. Okay. Yes, sir. Anything else, guys? Thank you, sir. Thanks are you going... Hello, sir. Uh, go ahead. Are you going? Are you going to cover DP? Yes, you're going to cover DP. It's it was mentioned over here, right? The DP should be covered. Dynamic programming. Yes. See, okay, sir. If you don't know DP trees and graph, trust me, any product based company is not going to take you. Yes. But I cannot directly jump to DP trust and grief because it requires lots of other concepts to move forward. Okay. Sure. Anything else, guys? Thanks, Anna. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anna. It was a okay. very nice session. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much, guys. Thank you.